Welcome to the lab. I'm Anthony Thomas, and here's what I've been up to. I'm going to show the results of about three months of experiments refining silver-plated items, and then find out if any of these experiments are effective by using XRF analysis. These cells are the workhorse of the operation. Silver-plated forks and spoons go right down into the anode bottle in my number two copper cell that's full of copper sulfate solution. These pieces I'm refining are a high concentration of copper and some are double and triple plated so I'm hoping for roughly a 3% yield of silver. In my number one copper cell I refine pieces that are more like 95% copper but still may have some impurities like base metals or any uncaptured silver from the number two copper cell. Also I put all of my leftover copper anode pieces into the number one cell. We then get 99.9 pure copper to plate out on the copper cathode that can be melted and either sold as pure copper or reused in the lab as a reagent. The remaining silver is captured in the anode bottle. Our third cell is our number two silver cell and it works the same way as the copper cell except we put 925 silver or higher silver pieces in the anode bottle and pure silver is plated out on a stainless steel cathode. Any metal richer than the silver, like palladium, maybe iridium, will get captured in the anode bottle, while base metals like copper and zinc are turned soluble and remain in the silver nitrate solution. You can also melt the slimes from the copper cells and then put those into the silver cell as well to get your pure silver back out. Using this method I just explained, you can recycle most, if not all, of your solutions so they can be reused again and again, which lower your operating costs drastically. The silver cell byproduct is copper nitrate, which can be converted into copper sulfate by simply pouring in sulfuric acid. The copper sulfate can then be reused in the copper cell and then after the conversion you use fractional distillation to get your nitric acid back. Same with the dirty copper sulfate solutions. By using electrolysis to drop the metals out of solution in your copper sulfate you can get most of your sulfuric acid back as well. It can be time consuming but if it's done properly there's very little waste and uh, what can seem like endless supply of reusable chemicals and reagents. You do have to augment your solutions from time to time with fresh acids and it's always good from time to time to clean out your entire system. We get 98-99% copper at the cathode. In the aspirator bottle these are our slimes. Our slimes are going to be fairly contaminated, but the goal here is to pull out the majority of the copper. Um, this process here in both of these first two cells is to get the majority of the copper out. Then what remains in our slimes will take over and filter. All of this solution can just be reused in the cell after we take any of the solids out of the solution. So all of our solutions get filtered and once they're filtered clear, so two or three times, um, they can just be reused in the cell. Once the color gets too dark, um, very cloudy looking, we use electrolysis and I'll show you how that works to pull the majority of the base metals out of there, leaving mainly just copper and nickel back in solution. When the copper sulfate solution gets so cloudy you can't see through it and it starts to turn kind of a grayish brown color, um, I'll run electrolysis using a platinized anode, which is titanium plated in platinum, and then I use a nickel rod as my cathode. I usually run about 4.5 volts, gives me about 3.5 amps, I'll run that for 3 to 5 days, and the majority of the metal will plate out leaving you with a clear solution which can then be reused in the cell or you can continue to do electrolysis until all of the metal has dropped out of solution and you have your sulfuric acid back. 
it'll be dilute sulfuric acid, so you'd have to boil off some of the water, but nevertheless, you can get all of your sulfuric acid back as well. In my last experiment, we melted all the silver plated together and ran it through the cell in the fish tank, and there was a sediment that settled out on the bottom, so I'm gonna get that isolated, and we'll see what the Smarty Pants Know-It-All XRF has to say. Well, that's pretty interesting. 90% of that sample is tin, copper, zinc, and nickel. Although all the metals did come over, and I think a lot of that was from some of the experiments I ran and uh, shaking the aspirator bottle and its contents kind of spilled out into the fish tank because there's some silver and lead and antimony. And we did even pick up iron, which we didn't have originally in the sample. So I'm thinking that could be from a little bit of rusting on the fish tank itself. Next, I rinsed and dried the copper cell slimes, and we'll get those into a piece of cellophane and get those tested in the XRF. So now keep in mind when we started, our silver concentration was about 2.7%, and the nickel concentration was about 4.14%. And here now, our silver content has gone up to 11%. I've had some as high as 13% after a first run. And also I noticed that the nickel concentration has dropped. So what we're finding is the majority of the silver is staying in the aspirator bottle. And the majority of the nickel is going over into the collection beaker. Or in this case, the fish tank. Okay, so here we have our copper cell slimes, and I want to get a pH test on the solution here. Two and a half, three, which is where copper sulfate should be. We'll get this filtered off, and we'll isolate our sediment at the bottom of the beaker. I'll probably rinse two or three times and filter. So here we have our slimes rinsed out. Uh, there's still some copper in solution, but they're fairly clean. And we've taken a pH and we know that this is about two and a half to three. Now we want to check the pH of our sodium hydroxide solution and We're at a 12. So by mixing our slimes that have been a pH around 3 and pouring them into our sodium hydroxide with a pH of 12, you have both extremes. And what you'll find is certain metals will go into the solution and certain metals will stay solids. And that gives us a good separation point. The other thing to consider too is if you took your slimes directly from this state and you poured them into hydrochloric acid, you could remove some of the metals and there's an isolation point there to be had as well. If you pour it into aqua regia at this point, what you'll find is you will get most of your silver to precipitate out, but the lead also goes with it. And lead is one of the metals that will stay in this solution, so we will be removing the lead, also all of the antimony as well after we put our slimes through this solution and then pour them through hydrochloric acid we'll get pure silver so I'm just going to transfer this into a larger beaker keep our stir bar here And now remember, I'm keeping the hot plate on a little so that we don't have any of the sodium hydroxide 
crash out a solution before it's time. And so now we'll give our slimes a good stir. We'll go ahead and pour them into the solution. Here it's important to get a good filtration because this is a good separation point to get the antimony and the lead out of our slimes. And so here when you rinse, you'll see that you can get a very clear, you can rinse it clear. I have about one or two more rinses, but this is only after two rinses. Okay, so here we have our copper cell slimes after lying and rinsed. Um, pretty much 100% clean. I don't see any color in there at all. So we know at this point we could dissolve all this in nitric acid, uh, plate the silver out on pieces of copper, um, and then refine our cement silver from there. Um, but the series of experiments that I'm doing, I'm going to use aqua regia. So let's mix up our aqua regia which is three parts hydrochloric acid to one part nitric acid and I'm gonna go and 100 milliliters of nitric acid Let's turn on the fan. And now I'm going to pour off this rinse water here. 